five major components. Number one, the divine nature. Yes, sir. You need to stand here. The divine nature. As the father had life in himself, so had he given to the son to have life in himself. This is where the nature of God, what that his DNA, his nature, he reproduced it in his son. And now come, you, 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 you come. As a believer, this is the first thing God does in you. If you don't have this, you are not ready for any other thing following. You don't have the foundation. This is the first thing a man of God, a woman of God, a child of God must bring to the table. A genuine salvation experience. Jesus did not get born again. He didn't get it by being born again. He was born of the Spirit. You and I, having fallen in Adam, needs to be born of the Spirit, to be recreated. That's where it all starts. Without it, every other thing, a new heart, I will give you. A new spirit, I will put in you. Now, for Jesus, he was born like that, naturally. That's why he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. He was a child of the Holy Ghost. You become like him when you get born again. You have to make sure that you have the genuine experience. Joining a church will not solve this problem. You must... These things must be experienced. A new heart will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of you. That's what is called the old nature. And I will give you a heart of flesh. That's what is called the divine nature. A new nature. And verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my ways. Now that spirit within is what causes us to live the Christian life. To live in righteousness. To walk in love. All the other wonderful things that you want. Now, this first experience. And that indwelling, that spirit that he puts within us. Is what births the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit are the manifestations of the divine nature. They are the manifestations of a transformed life, of a changed life. Hmm. I'm sure somebody will deal with that in the course of this. They are the fruits of the divine nature. They are the fruits of the Holy Spirit within. When Nicodemus asked Jesus how this new birth, because he said to him, you must be born again. And he asked him, how does that work? Do I go back again into my mother's womb? He said, no, no, no. You, you have to be born of the spirit and of the water. Another day's discussion. I'll put my spirit, that my spirit is what causes you to walk in my ways. That power is within. It's not an anointing you feel without. And there are a lot of things that go on with it. And you shall dwell in the land I give to your father. You shall be my people. I'll be your God. 29. <laughs> and I'll save you from your uncleanness. And I'll call for the corn. Now, now, now. Let's save you from your uncleanness. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. It's not you come into Christ, you are still a murderer. It's nothing like that. You come into Christ, you are still a prostitute. No, 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 no. Somebody deceived you. You come into Christ, you are still an arm robber. No, 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 no. The nature of God is now in you. The nature of righteousness. The nature of love. In nature of meekness. Understanding the subject of redemption. This has to be built from foundation up. See the foundation, the recreated human spirit. See the foundation, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within a man's heart. 
see the foundation, experiencing regeneration and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's the first time a believer comes in contact with the Holy Spirit. And for that moment, he becomes a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so we come to number two. Number two. Sir, come. Two things need to start immediately. There are other things. But two things need to start. This man needs to start walking in love and manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Because he has it. Now, manifestation is what is required. And then, number two, he needs to start his journey into the supernatural. And this stage two is called walking by faith. Everyone say walking by faith. The first step into the supernatural is a faith life. Now, I want you to watch now. Spirit within carries authority, carries dominion over Satan because you are a child of God. You carry God's nature. You don't need to feel anything. You don't need to, at this level, there is no sight, there is no feeling, there is no manifestation. You just trust God's word and act on it and it produces results. When you are the one that is sick, rebook the sickness. And when you finish, get up and act on what the word of God said. The basis for oppression here, it is, it is written. Everyone say, it is written. The basis here is, whatever, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The, the journey into supernatural is not anointing. The entrance point is faith. And that faith must work by love. Anytime you exercise your faith, you exercise it, it's not producing result. Go and check your love life. Because the love is the thermometer that controls it. This new birth came an impartation, not only of the divine nature of righteousness and all of those wonderful things that we teach in new creation. One of the things that was imparted with the new birth is a measure of faith. It's called the fruit of faith. Just like you have the other fruit of the Holy Spirit. There is God's faith. The faith of God was imparted into your human spirit. Now that measure now, you are supposed to start growing it, developing it by feeding the, on the word of God. By listening to the word of God. That's why whether it is trainings or Bible, coming to church, being fed with what, just like you are being fed now. That capacity will now start growing. It is not when anointing comes that you get your muscle. A baby is born with certain things. A baby is born with brains. A baby is born with eyes. Now the brain might now need education to feed it with softwares, more information, so the baby can mature. But it's not education that gave the baby brain. You are born, the Bible said he has dealt to every man the measure of faith. It came with a new birth. The moment the Holy Spirit bears that witness, with your spirit that you are a child of God, it removes from you the burden of sin, brings that joy of salvation. One of the things he floods your heart, he does in your heart, is to impart that supernatural faith. Now, it's different now. When we move over to the anointing, you will meet the gift of faith. Which one comes? That one comes with the anointing. And it comes and goes. When the anointing is on, you it lifts. But this one that you have in your soul stays. And it is what you use to overcome circumstances, overcome trials. I said to the grace of God given to me, to everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man, the measure. Everybody came with this one. We all started with the same thing, all of us. If some are, are, are growing more, it's because they have fed their own and exercised it. That's why they are accomplishing more results. Players into the field and you start training them. Some are not practicing. They are not coming to exercise. They are not coming to do all that. And after when they find out, they all started together. But this one, anytime you give him penalty, he scores. This one, giving goal kick from the other end, he knows how to kick it and the ball will enter. 
it is practice now. Feed your faith so you can starve your doubt. Exercise your faith so you super results. As you feed it, that is, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans chapter 10 verse 17. As you feed it with the word of God, it grows. You know, you know why some people look like they are supermen? It's because they started exercising. As you use it, it grows into stronger faith. As you use it, after a while, you have a very heavy. You know, boxers start for lightweight championship. And then one day you hear the man is doing heavyweight. You don't go to gym. And you see this man that has been exercising for the last 200 years. He carries 200 kg. He lifts it. You go and do that. It will be too much for you. Start with 10. After a while, you balance. Make it 15. After a while, make it 20. This is what that scripture I read for you. To grow them to Christ's fullness. Those people who stepped out to give one million, that let them give five. Those people who give five, that give ten. Those people who give ten, that finally give hundred. Those ones who refuse to give, stay there. Faith that is no use has been unctioned away. At the end of the day, the man will be struggling. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Anybody born of God, anybody that has this, will defeat the devil. He will overcome the world. Anybody that has this, the divine nature, will defeat Satan. But there is a factor in that man that actually brings the victory is his faith life. Look at it. For whatsoever that is born of God, overcoming the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What is that? So if he does not develop his faith life, he becomes dwarfed in the spirit. It is not God. It is not that Jesus is not effective. It's just that the man has not developed. There is no degrees of divine nature. It's the same divine nature you have that I have. There is nothing like measures. It comes in measures. Half current, you got half current. I got, no, no, it's either you are born again or you are not. It's the nature of God, just like humanity. There is no degree of, you don't have higher humanity than another person. It's either you are a human being or you are not. So if you are born, you are part of this new race called the new creation. You have God's nature. That thing that was in Jesus is in you. Actually, it is what is also in the heavenly father that is in you. In, in, you need to understand that that's how we are made originally. There will be no need to be born again if we didn't fall in Adam. We were created in the image of God. So this is what Jesus returns back to us at new birth. It is not joining a church. It's not finding a religion. It's the restoration of man's original nature that was lost by the fall. So this is the foundation on which power, layers of power, will now be entrusted. This is how the New Testament functions. So, the first level is this force. And faith is a creative force. That's what God used to create the universe. That force is a believability. A force in the human spirit. Now, when I talk about numa force, the forces of the recreated human spirit, like love, one of them is faith. It can move mountains. It can accomplish the impossible. Okay? I give you back the assignment. So I said first, study the, the redemption, the new creation, the cross, and all of that that brings you salvation. Study that first part. And study a lot on who you are in Christ. So that level one is sorted out. Get to know what happened to you. And then you have the foundation for all of these things. The number two, Give attention to studying about faith and, you, and your love life. These two major things. Faith is the accelerator. Love is the brakes to control it so that you can arrive 
without accident. Faith works by love. Love is what regulates it. When you go out of love, you also sh shut down your faith. That's when you exercise faith, nothing happens. The power that that thing unleashes is held back. And I say to you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, if you read the verses before this, you will see what happened. Jesus and his disciples on their way to Jerusalem, and they saw a fig tree. He was hungry. Actually, he ministered. wanted fruit. When he got there, there was no fruit. So he cursed the fig tree. You see how faith he speaks. He cursed the fig tree. He said, no man will eat fruit again from you. And the disciples heard him, but everybody passed. Nobody took notice. They went to Bethany, the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus slept there. The next day, they were returning back to Jerusalem. Bethany is a city not far from Jerusalem. That's where they slept. The next day, they were returning. It was a seven days feast that they came for. They are going to be around here for seven days. But they are going to be sleeping in Bethany, but going to Jerusalem. Now, watch. As they were returning, the disciples now saw the tree withered. He didn't wither when he spoke to it. I want you to see how faith was. He withered by the next day. And the disciples saw the tree with that, and they were amazed. And they said, ah, see that fig tree that the Lord cursed yesterday? He has withered to the roots. Peter, calling to remember, said, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed. He has withered away. You see, now, at the level of faith, there is no manifestation. You don't feel nothing. But just leave exactly what you have said. It will come to pass. It's when you go and start doubting, you pull that power back. You turn the switch off. Because you do it in many things. You do it. There are so many areas where you do it. He, 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 he goes to the doctor. He said, I have a headache. He tells you, okay, take this Panadol, two in the morning, two in, you know, whatever. You take the Panadol and swallow. You don't feel anything. The headache doesn't vanish. You just go on doing your normal work. But be, because the drug has entered, the drug is doing its work. Then after a while, later in the afternoon, ah, he has gone no. But what some of you do is when you speak, and because the power of faith is released by speaking, when you release your faith, you go on and pull the power back. Everybody say, we walk not by sight, but by faith. So those who are looking for manifestation will not learn the ABCD of the supernatural. The manifestation always come after believing and speaking. Now, manifestation has come. So when they recognize it, look at verse 22. And Jesus answering said to them, what? Have faith in God. Verse 23. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, is he speaking to this mountain? Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. You've spoken it, just believe it. The fever did not leave where you say, but just believe it. Just stand in there. Anytime your mind go there, just give the Lord praise and thank him that the process is working behind the scene, even though you have not seen the result. And then later, what you will see, you see the whole sickness wither away. A manifestation has come. That's how the supernatural life begins in a believer. And when you start ministering to the sick, a lot of the healings will not be instant. You rebook the sickness, command the man to be healed. You might not see anything. You might not know, no jerking, no falling. And you tell him, go home, you are made whole. And then he comes back a day after or two days after telling you how that leg that was swollen has gone down. How I finished sleeping, I woke up in the morning. This is shocking, Pastor. You have started your journey in the supernatural. Everybody say, everybody say I, hear. I hear. Say it again. I see. I, mm -hmm. I see means I understand. 
He said, have faith in God. When you speak to situations, believe in your heart that what you said shall come to pass. And you shall have whatsoever you say. Look at When do you believe that what you say will come to pass? Is it when it has manifested or when you said it? That's what he's teaching them. Believe, then the manifestation will come later. I say, you shall, shall, later, have what you said. Just like it happened to the fig tree. And once every believer learns to exercise faith, they can begin to cause the impossible to happen. Things will be happening. And this is what you need to that they just shall live by faith. Your own finance depends on it. Your own business, your children. And see weapon. You shall quench all the fairy that of the wicked one. So whenever Satan attacks, whenever the enemy fires an arrow, out of your being, God has given you a measure of faith. If you are having some issues, what you do is you feed it. Get some tapes, get some word, get some things that are faith building. Don't get anything that is condemnation in nature. Don't get things that are creating that. Get the word of God and listen to it. And when you finish, get up. Speak to that situation. And rebook it to live. It might be a dying child. It might be a sick baby. It might be a situation that started in the night. It might be your spouse. Your husband is choking. You don't know what happened. It could be attacked. It could be rebook it. Don't go there. Yeah. So, if somebody help, all these things I watch in the movies. May that kind of thing not come out of your mouth. Why that crime and somebody helps the person dies? How can you be crying for help when you God has given you the helper, the comforter? And he lives inside you. You have a generator. What we are teaching you now is how to turn it on. You have a car. We are teaching you how to turn the ignition on. So that motion can begin. Don't cry. It's somebody there. Even if you have to take the person to the doctor. Rebook. Exercise your faith first. Tell Satan, stop. I command you to take your hand from my child. The Bible said, I shall be saved. I am my household. You are not taking anybody from this house. You are not touching my spouse. You are not touching my child. You are not touching my dad. I rebuke you. I break your power over my family. Can I hear somebody say? Then you can tell him, take him to the doctor. Let him check him. They will can do whatever they need to do. Many cases that will not be necessary because the man will be healed. Other cases, yeah, God is not against mercy. And you will see, even where there has to be medical treatment, it's a size the supernatural faith first, and that medical treatment will have guarantee that it will turn out well. So, nothing like he went to hospital, died in hospital. No, 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 no. You are living that man's life only in the hands of ordinary men that can make mistakes. A lot of men will go for prostrate cancer operation or prostrate, whatever. When the doctors finish, there is no more erection. They can't do that. They are permanently damaged because the nerves is what they cut in order to cut off. Yeah. To get to this problem, they cut through, cut blood vessels, cut nerves, and when they finish, they remove the problem they want to remove, they created something else. Whenever you have, you have your love, whatever situation, it could be jobs, it could be career, it could be whatever. <laughs> Turn the supernatural world on with the voice of faith. When you finish, like a man that turned the switch on, and current started flowing. Leave it time for it to have its perfect work. And it will deliver to you the manifestation. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> this is so serious. You get this right, you are ready for the big stuff. Yahweh. 
the King of Zion.